In this session, what I'd like to do is an example of an object that moves with a constant velocity. So let's choose a velocity that's nice and simple. Let's say 2 meters per second. So this object will be moving with a constant velocity of 2 meters per second. And what I'd like to do is develop the graphs, the distance versus time graph, the velocity versus time graph, and the acceleration versus time graph for this object. So let's take a look first at the um, velocity versus, excuse me, so let's first take a look at the distance versus time graph for something that moves with constant velocity or distance versus time graph. This axis will be in units of uh, time, so in units of second. This, ob this axis will be in distance, and that will be in units of meters. So this point right here would be, say, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, and so on. And on this axis, I'm going to choose units of two meters. So two, or this would be four meters, this would be six meters, and so on. Now what this means is, and as a simple calculation, let's say I wanted to know how far this has traveled in a specific period of time. I can choose my equation that says delta x, or the difference in x, or the distance, equals velocity times time. Now what this means is, if I'm moving at two meters per second, in a one second interval of time, notice my units of time cancel out, and I just get, in one second, this object travels a distance of two meters. So looking at my graph, at one second, this object will travel a distance of two meters. So I'd make a dot right there. After an additional second between this point and this point, this object's going to travel a distance of two meters. So everything this object travels, it will move a distance of two meters. And I could connect the points on this graph now, and when I do that, I should see a nice linear relationship, depending on how straight I can actually draw this, to indicate that I'm moving equal distances in equal amounts of time. Now let's look at the velocity versus time graph for this particular case. So if again, if this object's traveling with a constant velocity, of two meters per second, that means the velocity is not changing. So in this particular case, a velocity versus time graph would look like this. So again, I have time on this axis, which I'm just going to symbolize with a T. It's going to be in units of second. On this axis, I have velocity, which I'll symbolize with a V, and it's going to be in units of meters per second. Now, it doesn't matter the scale that I do on this. So again, so this will be one second, two seconds, three seconds, and so on. On this axis, I could do, say, one meter per second, two meters per second. I define the scale that I'm going to use to measure this. And in this case, there really isn't a calculation to perform because at any particular moment in time, this object will be traveling at a rate of two meters per second. So it'll be a nice straight line to indicate that it's moving at constant velocity. And this is what constant velocity actually means. So this straight line for velocity versus time graph means it's moving with constant velocity. So again, constant velocity means the velocity does not change. It will remain the same no matter at what interval of time that you're looking at it. Now the last graph that we can look at for an object moving with constant velocity is the acceleration versus time graph. So if this is my acceleration versus time graph, and again, this is going to be my time axis, and it'll be in units of seconds. This will be my acceleration graph, and it's going to be in units of meters per second squared. Now, let's just do a quick calculation to see or to prove out what our graph's going to look like. So I'm just going to scroll this up a little bit. Now, acceleration equals the change in velocity, so v final minus v initial, divided by the time it takes to change that velocity, t final minus t initial. And in this case, we assumed a constant velocity of two meters per second. So what that means is that our final velocity is gonna be two meters per second. Our initial velocity is also gonna be two meters per second. And I'm gonna divide that by some time. It could be one second, it could be five seconds, it could be 10 uh, seconds. It doesn't matter. That interval of time is irrelevant, so I'm just going to write it as delta t, because what I'm going to see is no matter at what, or no matter what interval of time I choose to look at, the velocity is going to be the same, or the initial velocity will be the same as the final velocity. And in this case, it will be zero, uh, zero meters per second divided by some interval of time. And it doesn't matter what that interval of time is, because it's always going to be zero, or the uh, the 
expression is always going to work out to be 0 meters per second squared. So for a constant velocity problem, it doesn't matter what interval of time that you're looking at, you're going to get a nice straight line across the um, time axis. And this is going to be an indication that, one, acceleration is 0. But it also should tell you that this is a constant velocity. This object's traveling with constant velocity. That means the velocity is not changing. So if you were to see an acceleration versus time graph, this is what you should understand that you're looking at, a constant velocity problem.